uh, now let's continue with the next speaker. Uh, hitting the stage is uh, Eduardo Pons. Eduardo is a robotics engineer, software engineer at Eproxima, the sponsor, uh, the big sponsor of this conference. As more and more robotics projects move into ROS2, developing fast and with the best tools is, becomes mandatory if you want to have your product quick into the market and with a very high quality. With this purpose, Eproxima has developed Vulkan Exus, and, uh, which is an all-in-one tool set for ROS2 development. And today, Eduardo is going to talk about this, about Vulkan Exus, and especially the enhancing ROS2 features for monitoring and security. Welcome to the conference, Eduardo. Are you there? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Then let's go. The audience is all yours. Okay. Can Can we see my screen? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, first of all, I also have a multi-screen setup, so I'll mostly be looking at my main screen here. But you know, so I might be uh, changing focus here. Um, all right, uh, as you were saying, uh, my name is Eduardo Pont. I'm a software engineer and project manager at Proxima. We're the company behind FastDBS, uh, which, uh, as you, many of you would know, is the default uh, middleware for, for ROS2. Um, and before that, I also I studied robotic engineering in, in Denmark, where I also worked as an industrial uh, IoT engineer. And before that, I studied industrial engineering here in Spain. Um, so that, that, that's a bit about me. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is Vulkan Nexus. As uh, Ricardo was uh, kindly saying, this is a um, uh, product uh, uh, that we have bundled up together, which is um, an all-in-one tool set for, for developing uh, ROS2 with enhanced capabilities. So it's a, kind of an extension of ROS2 if, if you if you like to, to look at it that way. And then I will present some of the main or key features uh, uh, Unfortunately, I won't have time to, to show everything, but uh, I'm going to explain two key points that we think uh, would be very interesting for, for the community. Um, before I start into more detail, I'm gonna go into the first uh, snippet here on the, on the notebook, and then I'm gonna open a, a shell and I will install Vulkan Exus. Um, so it's just copying and pasting. It takes uh, a bit of time. I actually don't know if I if this project is keeping my previous installation from my test, but you know, so it might take a bit of time for for you guys. So just leave it there while 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 I talk. But be sure you you do it because else uh, you won't be able to to follow. Um, okay. So what is the workshop about? Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, Vulkan Exus a bit, and I will go into the web page in a, in a minute. Um, we're going to talk about the two two of the key features that Vulkan Exus brings into the table. One of them is the FastDBS Statistics Monitor. This is a tool uh, that can also be used in Vulkan Exus, and we call it kind of Vulkan Exus uh, Monitor, uh, that you can use to monitor different uh, DBS and ROS2 related statistics, uh, up to actually 17, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, and you, so you, you can monitor the performance of your deployment, communication errors, you can spot bottlenecks uh, as you're running and so on. Um, and then we'll, we'll change topic into a kind of a very different topic, which is the, the world of uh, secure ROS2, that uh, as you know, ROS2 is uh, able to, to establish secure communications, leveraging the, the security plugins from the DDS implementations. And uh, I will go a bit into more detail about, about the security plugins then uh, when we talk about that. Um, and then uh, what, what I'm going to focus on is on what Vulkan Exus extends over secure ROS, which is the ability to store your private keys. So so the keys that you use to you know sign, sign your certificates and also encrypt your data, how to store them into a dedicated secure hardware that is especially specifically designed to keep private keys. So you know uh, instead of having a file with your private key in your robot on, or in your computer, you can put it into a specialized hardware that uh, is prepared so people cannot you know extract the key from it from it and things like that. Uh, so it's an extra level of security there. Uh, and then uh, for the last bit, uh, if we have time, uh, we will explain how to set up the statistics monitor with with uh, security as well, because there are some things that you you need to do uh, in order to be able to to use the statistics monitor in, with 
with security. So, so that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to go directly into vulcanexus.org for the next for the next bit. Uh, right. Uh, so I, I want to present what vulcanexus is and you know show kind of a web page that uh, our colleagues did, which is I think it looks awesome. So I just wanted to show up a bit here. Um, so what is vulcanexus? Vulcanexus is kind of a flavor of ROS2, right? So in the same sense, it has different packages and meta packages. What, what do we bring to the table, right? We bring a core, Vulkan Exus core uh, package, right? Which includes ROS2, and then it includes secure ROS2. It includes FastDDS, and FastDDS will always be the default uh, DDS middleware in Vulkan Exus. And you know that the, the, one of the main important things about Vulkan Exus is that regardless or your Vulkan Exus version, so regardless of whether you're using Vulkan Exus Galactic, Vulkan Exus Humble, uh, Vulkan Exus Iron, I think it's the I going to be called, um, doesn't matter, the, the fast DDS that you will have will be always the latest fast DDS versions. You will have all the back fixes, all the fast DDS capabilities, uh, because you know the, you, you probably know that in ROS2, this is um, somehow fixed into a specific, uh, uh, version of FastDDS 2.3, 2.6 for, for Humble and so on. Uh, so actually, in, in a couple of weeks' time, we will release FastDDS 2.7 and Vulkan Exus Humble and Vulkan Exus Galactic. Both will have FastDDS 2.7. And then you have the ROS2 Discovery Server. I talked about this a couple of years ago uh, uh, because I was kindly invited uh, for the ROS developer days two, year, two years ago, I believe, and we were talking about the, the Discovery Server as well there. Um, and then we have prepared different packages for the different purpose that or, or main purposes that we see on on on, on the usage usages of ROS2. One is uh, Vulkan Exus tools, which offers uh, you know basically uh, the the monitoring tools uh, to be able to monitor whatever you are doing. This is on top of the core, right? So you can install just the core, or you can install one of these or all of them, you know, in any combination you want. We have Vulkan Exus Cloud, which is uh, which includes a package specifically designed to use ROS2 uh, in a cloud, cloud to edge uh, or microservice architecture, if you'd like to think about that. We have a simulation package because uh, Vulkan Exus also ships uh, not only Gazebo, but also Webots, which is uh, the simulation tool that we'll be using on this ROS2. Because you know, Gazebo is great, but there are other simulation tools as well out there. And then we have Micro ROS, uh, which um, is the version of ROS2 for microcontrollers. And in here as well, you know, there are uh, several packages uh, within micro ROS and we guarantee that the agent and the micro ROS client will also be the latest version, no matter which Vulkan Exus uh, release you're using, right? Um, we can go into the documentation for a second. Uh, I just want to show you real quick, this is what I've been explaining and then uh, you have installation guides. Uh, this is kind of the script we're running is doing this exactly. So, um, you know, it's basically the same way as you install ROS2 because we want the transition from ROS2 to Vulkan Exus to be as seamless, seamless as possible. So you would see that the only thing you need to do in order to use Vulkan Exus instead of ROS2 is to source Vulkan Exus instead of ROS2 and that's all. And it's installed kind of in the same way. Uh, you can build it from sources. We do distribute uh, Docker images so you can, you know, uh, use Docker images for your prototyping or whatever. And then we have some tutorials, uh, etc. I will go now. I, I hope your installation has finished now. Uh, as I said, and then I would go into uh, showing what the monitor is. Before I open the monitor, uh, we're going to use WeBots. Uh, and for that, uh, we're going to run these three commands. I will explain what they are in a bit, but uh, it's important to start running them because WeBots also needs to install some tools uh, before uh, before starting the first time you start it. So let's do that. Um, I, I will explain what these commands are in a second. Uh, it will ask you whether you want to install this or not. Uh, just capital Y and enter, and then it will do that. All right. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do? Uh, I will sorry. I will name these WeBots so we don't get lost here on the terminal. WeBots. All right. Okay, so we're going to open the FastDDS monitor first thing, right? So we need to, uh, as I was saying, we need to source our Vulkan Exus installation. So instead of, you know, you normally you do OPT, ROS2, OPT, ROS2, Galactic, whatever, then in here uh, in, for Vulkan Exus, just write Vulkan Exus is the same thing, right? And then we can run the FastDDS monitor. Uh, this 
might take a while because it, it, it has to open the, the graphical tool here from, from the Rorschach. All right, there we go. Uh, I see that WeBots is initializing already. Let's go into the FastBTS monitor tab while WeBots uh, starts. And then I will click on start monitoring because that's what we want to do, right? Uh, we're going to use ROS uh, domain ID zero, which is the, def the default one. So I'm just going to leave it at that, right? And then right now it, it shows nothing because there are no participants uh, running, no, no ROS2 nodes running yet. But oh, we have two of them already, uh, which are coming, which come from here. Uh, come from the from the simulation here. Actually, if if the simulation is it's kind of going a bit slow for me, so uh, maybe if it's going slow for you as well, you can click on view and click on wireframe rendering, and then it will uh, go a bit smoother. Uh, I'll do that. It, it goes a bit smoother, and also it gives you a this cool ma matrix like uh, view, so you might feel like a hacker even. Um, Okay, so if we go into the monitor, we see that there are two uh, participants. Uh, let's double click into the icon there and see what they have inside. Um, when I say participants, it's uh, DDS lingo. Uh, we're talking about uh, ROS nodes, all right? Um, so I see two different part uh, ROS2 nodes, one with many data writers and data readers. This is uh, corresponding to the WeBots uh, world itself. So I'm going to go ahead and rename WeBots. I did that. I will do it here. Uh, right clicking on the name on the on the icon and then change alias. And then I will write here. Uh, this one is the drone itself, which is uh, waiting for command velocity commands to start moving. Uh, we'll do that in a second. So I'm going to rename it. Okay. So so two cool things here, right? We we can see uh, the participants that we have running. We can see the end the the data writers and readers. That's uh, ROS2 publishers and subscribers that they have. And we actually can see if we click on one of these uh, entities, we can see that the info information here displayed changes. So we can actually use this to introspect the QoS settings. You know, uh, different DDS QoS settings, volatile, keep last. Uh, you know, wherever. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with this, but you know, reliability, uh, reliable. If we click on different ones, it shows different ones. Uh, it also shows them for, for the participants themselves. And then one last thing before we start uh, showing some statistical data is that I want to click on this uh, three dotted menu here and then select the physical information uh, panel. And then we can see here, what we see here is the hosts that are running uh, DDS entities, right? In this case, it's only one. This is for my ROS check, right? Um, so if I click here, it shows the, the entities that are inside. And then if I double click, it will list the, the users within that host that are running different things. And then we have, you know, you double click, you have the process ID here. In this case, it's only one process that it's running both WeBots and the drone, right? So, so that's what we have right now. Uh, let's go back into the, into the Jupyter notebook, and then I will explain what these commands were. We're going to open a third tab. And we're going to use this. So uh, I have uh, three already, one for, for the monitor, one for, from WeBots. And then I'm going to have one for the uh, Leo controller, right? And then we're going to see, do first, we're going to do an export, which uh, if you look at it, uh, it says export FastDDS statistics. This is an environment variable for, for FastDDS to where, where you tell FastDDS which statistics measurements you're interested in seeing, right? Else it doesn't publish anything. So you need to uh, establish which ones they, uh, you want to use. There are 17 of them. Uh, you can take a look at what uh, they are on, on, on the names in if you go into the FastDDS documentation. And then you navigate to the Chapter 10 statistics module and then topic names. So you see that here we have the, the actual topic names and the aliases that you can use on the environment variable to activate them, right? So that's what we're doing. We're activating history latency topic, physical data topic, and subscription throughput topic. It's the same ones we act, we activated on the WeBots uh, process, right? Then we source Vulkan Exus, right? This is, uh, fam you're familiar with this from, from ROS2 deployments or from your ROS2 usage. And then we run the Tiliop that you might have also run before right so at this point uh we have you know you can control with the uh, u a, a o j k l m n comma or something um 
so at this point we can actually control the robot. So if we go into into the WeBot window, and then I'm gonna click on O, so the drone doesn't get lost, it will start going in circles, right? So so that's working, and that's great. If we go now into the fast DDS monitor, we will see uh, if you click refresh to get rid of. Uh, I will get rid of the physical menu because we don't need it. There is a new there is a new participant. Uh, which is corresponding if you go in click in change alias. This is corresponding to the Tilio, right? Tilio. I'm gonna name that. Okay, uh, back to the Jupyter Notebook. There is a fourth terminal to be opened, and that is for doing a ROS2 topic echo, um, where we are going to echo the speed of the of the drone. It's the same thing, right? Exporting. So we want the statistic information here. We want to use Vulkan Exos instead of ROS2. And then we want to echo, right? And then in, on this terminal, we're going to see, there we go, uh, velocity uh, for or GPS speed for the drone, right? So, so it, it is receiving data. If we go now to the monitor, we'll see two participants instead of one. And the thing is like, the first one is the actual topic echo. I don't know how familiar you are with ROS2, but the second one is the ROS2 daemon, with, which was instantiated with when I ran the uh, when I ran the, CL, the ROS2 CLI. So but it is there. We're not going to take a look at it. So let's create some data because we have, you know, our drone going in circles. So let's monitor how how performance is there or how how it is do, doing. So we click here on create new chart. We're going to select fast DDS latency. We're going to use a time window of two minutes. So this is a moving window that we're going to, to use. Uh, you can also uh, display historical data, but we're going to use kind of real time data. And then I want an update every five seconds so we don't overload the, the graph with any points. I'm going to select a source entity ID, the data writer for the GPS speed topic. Uh, be aware that it's the GPS speed, not the GPS, not the GPS vector, but the GPS speed. And then I'm going to select this. That one is from the, the from the drone, and then the the reader for that topic is uh, the GPS speed is the the reader containing the ROS2 topic echo command. And then I'm going to plot the median. Right. I will click on add and close for now. And then we'll start seeing uh, statistical measurements in, in a bit. Uh, it might take a while. There you go. So we're having now a, a latency of 75, 60 microseconds in that topic. It might jump a lot, right? Because yesterday I was seeing uh, 2,000 microseconds. That is because we're running on the cloud, you know, on, on, the, on the container. So we actually don't know how many, how many resources you're seeing. If you, if you run this simulation in your computer, you would be more into the uh, even below 20 microseconds all the time. See, now a big spike for no reason. Uh, we didn't have any resources. Um, I'm going to add a new series here. So if I click on series and then add series, I'm going to add a new series of uh, latency for the same data writer and data reader. In this case, you could choose other ones, but uh, I will choose the same data writer and data reader for the GPS topic. And then instead of the median, I'm going to plot the minimum, right? And then I will close on and close. Um, so so now uh, there will be two series uh, coming. There you go. Do you have the mean here on this on this period? I'm going to show you how to create a new uh, graph because you can create more than one as many as you like. You click on edit and then display real time data. This is what we are doing. And then if you remember, we told uh, to uh, TASBDS to uh, send subscription throughput data. So I'll click on that. Instead, in a still two minute uh, time window and update period of five seconds. I click on OK there. And then a source entity. I'm, I'm interested, uh, I'm very interested into this GPS speed. So I will uh, see how much how much data is actually being received there. And then I want the mean in this case, let's say. So now we have two different graphs. Uh, we can actually move them around uh, and you know, play, place them in different places. Um, cool things that you can do here. One, while this is cool, there are still cool things that you can do here. Uh, if you click on the name of one of the series, you can hide it because you know maybe you have 10 and you're interested in one. If you click on the color of one of them, you can change them to, I don't know, magenta, which is a very pretty color. So I want magenta there. 
And then if you right click on one of the series, like the median, you can export it to CSV, right? So let's uh, say median.csv there, CSV. Um, we click on save. And then if we go into the code editor, we would see that there is a median CSV file and there it has a timestamp and the actual data for for each of the timestamps. So you can use it for you know further uh, data processing, whatever you want to do, artificial intelligence, very cool stuff you can do with this, right? Um, I'm going to stop here for now with the FastDBS monitor. Oh, no, before that, I want to show you one more thing. If you click on this uh, question mark here, you can see different uh, actions that can be done within uh, one of the graph views, right? Uh, so I'm going to show you some of them. If you click on pause, you can actually pause and see things. If you click on a point, it will display the data point. You can uh, zoom in uh, as much as you like. You can scroll in and out. Uh, you can put it back together. And then uh, I'm going to click on this point. And then on play. And then it will start playing again, right? So that's the, that's the last thing I wanted to show. Uh, there are different things uh, that can be done here. Uh, I encourage you to uh, just type in Google FastDBS monitor documentation and then go into the read the docs uh, documentation where there are, you know, a lot of uh, explanations of the different menus. Uh, there are tutorials. Uh, this thing for using it with Rostur Vulcanics is also here. We have a Docker image available. We have a, an installer if you want to install it separately. A lot of different information here. So take a good look there. Uh, on the meantime, I'm going to close everything here because we're going to jump into the topic of ROS2 security. I know I'm, I'm going a bit too fast. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, you guys cannot follow, but there are very a lot of things, cool things from Vulcanexus that I, I wanted to show. Um, so, you know, everything that I'm explaining is in the detail, detailly explained on the, on the Jupyter notebook. So, you know, uh, make sure that you, uh, take a good look after and maybe try to reproduce the entire tutorial if you're not having time right now. I will scroll down um, to the security bit, right? Um, and then I'm, I'm shifting uh, topic completely. We're going to talk about how to secure DBS on ROS2. And um, for that, ROS2 has some built-in tools to generate the, the files that, the, that, that DBS requires for for securing your communication. First, I want to let you know that DDS defines three levels of security. Those are uh, authentication, whether that is whether you know uh, a node is able, it's allowed to join uh, the secure communication or not. There is access control, uh, which specify that on the nodes which have been authenticated, uh, you can specify to which topic or on to which topics they can publish and subscribe and subscribe that access control and then you have encryption where you can decide whether you want to on top of authentication and, and uh, access control whether you want your data to act to to be encrypted as well uh, right so what go, what we're going to do first uh, is we're going to create with the using the ros2 tools we're going to create the the key store as in ros 2 lingo where the certificates are. So we will go here. Um, we will create a key store and then I'm going to stop there for a second because I want to show things uh, one by one, right? Um, I think a cool tool to see what's going on here is the uh, tree. So I will install that. Uh, sudo apt install minus y tree takes two seconds, right? Uh, I don't know if you know this tool, but uh, I'm very much in love with this tool. So if you now click, uh, say, tree demo key store, you know, we, we can see the, the file structure here. So the key store has three directories. One is the enclaves, the other one, one other one is private, and the other one is public. So private and public are related to the certification authority. Uh, uh, for the secure communication. That is the trusted entity that everyone is going to trust uh, that, you know, and, and it's the, certific the, the certification authority is the entity that is going to allow people to join the communication because every security file must be signed by the certification authority. How is that done? It's done using a private key, right, uh, which is here. We, if, you, if we go into the code editor, we can actually see it in the, on the demo key store, private, and then the key. This is a normal private key, right? 
uh, it's uh, here on the clear. So if you open the file, you can see, right? This is the kind of sensitive information that we're going to protect on this tutorial and that you don't want anyone to see, or you don't want the, this actually on your robot. You only want this on the, on the computer that you use to sign your certificates. Then we have uh, the public certificate for the certification authority. That is the, the public key that everyone uses to verify that some other file has been signed uh, correctly from for the certification authority. And then uh, that's private and public. So, so your robot will need uh, the, the public key. And then on the enclaves, um, which is the third uh, di directory, on the enclaves, what we're going to have is uh, an XML configuration file, which defines for this specific secure communication, it defines some um, some domain rules. Uh, didn't want to change to that window, sorry. It defines some rules for, for this specific uh, communication, right? Uh, whether allow participants are able to join, different, different stuff, right? Um, and then this every robot needs, right? Because it's kind of the top level uh, security uh, entry point. And then uh, if we go back into the into the editor here, you have a signed version. This is how a, this is how a file looks like, right? So this has been signed by the certification authority. This ROS2 tool has, has done for us, right? I'm going to go back into the Jupyter notebook and run the third command here, which is create, create an specific enclave for, for the robot that we're going to use, this drone that we were seeing, right? So let's do that. And then if we do three demo key store again, we see that it has created this set of uh, files here, uh, the private key for the robot that the robot is going to use to encrypt data, and then some public certificate for that, and the permissions that I was talking to you about, you know, whether you, you are allowed to publish or, or subscribe to a specific topics, right? If we go into the code editor and take a look at those um, very quickly, all right, the key, the private key is the same. This one we're going to protect in the next step. Uh, actually, let me, before I start, uh, let us open a terminal. Please do this because the security installation takes a bit of time, right? Uh, there are some tools that we're going to use in the tutorial because we don't have a hardware secure module and then we need to install some software simulation for that. So run this script that, uh, actually I, I didn't say it, but uh, it was not only me who prepared this project. Uh, it was also my colleague uh, from the Proxima, Fabio Santiago. I think he's somewhere here on the chat, so he might say hello. Uh, he's also the guy that put together all the Vulkan Nexus repository. So, uh, you know, be sure to, to to tell him something because he's worked very hard on this. Um, so uh, while you're, uh, maybe this was installed already on my machine, but while, while you're installing that, uh, I will explain what the, pre or, or take, we will take a look at what the permissions are. So if we go into the XML for the permissions and we'll show it to you very quickly, we have a XML that is granting for everyone that is using this permissions file. Um, it's granting access to publishing in all these topics. Uh, you can use wildcards to see request, uh, uh, request and reply, and ROS2 topics, specific things, uh, and then ROS2, uh, every ROS2 topic. So same for subscribe, so for subscription, and then we actually have another rule for the ROS discovery info, which is the, um, the topic that is used to build the discovery graph uh, on, uh, on, by the ROS2 demon, right? And then we have, the signed version of that uh, as well, right? Uh, which is the same. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to take this private key and we're going to move it into a hardware secure module. We didn't have one, so uh, our installation has installed a software simulation for hardware secure modules. So the interface is the same and you can prototype with that, right? Uh, uh, in the end, you will need to buy a hardware secure module. I don't know if you know how these things look like, but uh, if we click here, you know, normally they come in the form of cards or USB plugs, uh, different different formats, right? Uh, depending on on what you're using, that you can plug in your computer and then you can unplug, and then the computer has no access to the to the sensitive information anymore, right? That's the, that's the way you protect uh, the communication is by actually <laughs> unplugging the hardware secure module. So what we're going to do now is we're going to instantiate one of these. Uh, software um, 
software hardware secure modules, uh, I actually, you, you need to close down the terminals after running the installation script because they're, they're, you need to log in and out before, the, before being able to use this tool. So may, be sure that you close the terminal and open a new one. And then we will initialize one of these uh, hardware secure modules. This is what this command is. It, prove, it puts a pin into it, whatever. And then we're going to use, to use it and we're going to import, um, we're going to import our, you see the, the private key for the actual enclave for the demo, we're going to put it into that, into that hardware secure module, right? So now we have imported it. And what we're gonna do now is we're, we're actually going to remove the private key because you know we have it on the hardware secure module. So now we don't want the computer to have access to the private key directly. We want it, we want it to have access to the private key through the hardware secure module. So for that, we will remove the key.pem file uh, in the in the enclave. And then what we will do is instead we will generate um, key.p11 file uh, in the same place, which uh, we will see contains. Uh, this one has been deleted, as you can see. And then instead we have this key P11, which contains a URI, uh, which FastDDS now knows how to interpret and how to use it to query the hardware secure module to extract the key, right? So that's what we have done now. Now our private key is on the hardware secure module. We don't have direct access to it, to it anymore. We need to go through the, through the uh, PKCS11 API, which is the protocol that is used to communicate with that. Okay, so now let's put it together. Let's run the same simulation. Uh, we got simulation, but uh, se with security. For that, we're going to uh, need to do some steps. I'm going to put the code editor on the right and the notebook on the left here, because we need to modify some things on the example. Uh, we can close these files already. Um, first, we need to go into the ROS2 workspace. Uh, this is the things that Javi has prepared for you. So. Uh, into source, and then we bought Mavic secure. And then we first thing we need to do is to update the launch file here. And Five this minutes. only has, all right, this uh, only has uh, one, uh, one function. So we're going to substitute that one. Uh, what, we're do what we're doing here is we are adding an enclave uh, parameter so we can actually pass the enclave to the to the simulation. That's everything we're doing. So uh, be sure to save that. I will do this uh, very quick because we're running out of time. Uh, we will modify the URD file, which is the resources description for the for the simulation that we're running. Uh, you see that uh, we have this replace this plugin with this other one, uh, where we are also uh, adding the enclave uh, functionality. All right. Um, okay. And then the last thing we need to do is to go into the driver of the robot itself. Uh, so uh, into Webot Secure Mavic Driver. And then we're going to copy this code that you see it's put in the enclave argument. Uh, so so the, the robot can, the, the simulation can load. Uh, the the enclave the security files we're going to substitute this init here with uh, the code from the snippet i'm just going to in, in python you know just you need to make sure that the tabs are correctly set all right uh, and then we just need to open or go into one of the, our terminals and then if we go into rush to workspace and then we run call from build python python doesn't build, so it will take uh, two seconds. There we go. And then I, I, I will run the same simulation, right? I'm going to start with the new terminal uh, so we don't have a clutter. Um, I'm going to, yes, launch the, the Webot simulation. There are some environment variables you need to export uh, where the key is stored. You need to tell Vulkan Nexus where the key is stored is. You need to enable security, enforce the strategy that is set on those files. And then you need the pin to access uh, the, the hardware secure module to extract the private keys. So I'm going to extract this, uh, export this. You need to do that in every terminal that you're going to use for this. Then we're going to source Vulkan Nexus and our local installation with the simulation. And then we just run 
the Webot simulation with the enclave, right? There it is. While while it runs, I will go back and then launch the teleop. So it's the same thing, right? Exporting some variables, sourcing. I will just copy everything together there. And then we run the teleop with the hardware secure uh, demo enclave, right? I will call, I like this matrix view, so I'll go and see wireframe rendering. Um, okay, uh, sorry, not that one. This one, right? So now we can, if we click on O, we can uh, set the drone to go in circles into a secure way. You've seen that it works, but you know, it's the same thing. So we might have not done nothing. So I will stop the drone and then I will open a terminal where I would uh, run a teleop, but without the security files. And then you will see that it's not able to communicate. Um, so we'll go here and then this is sourcing Vulkan Exus and then uh, launching the, the teleop without the security enclave, right? So if we go in, I will show the two terminals here. The top one is the secure one. Secure. Um, no secure. If I click on O on the on the non-secure one, you see that the drone does not move. I'm clicking very hard here. And then if you go into the secure one and then you click, then it will respond, right? So we have effective uh, secure communication. We have uh, secured this communication. So people without the correct credentials cannot join. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to have time to show you how to uh, use uh, the FastDDS monitor with security, but I, we can quickly uh, skim through it because you know the tutorial is that once you have it running the, the monitor looks the same right so basically what you would need to do is to uh, go into the code editor uh, let me close all these I, I will not do it but i will explain it all right um you need to go into ross 2 workspace and then edit this security file this is a an xml configuration file for the for the monitor and then in here you see that there are some security properties here what you would need to do is to, uh, sorry, I, want, I didn't want to open this file first. The, uh, first, the permissions file on the key store, um, on the enclaves, permission. So you need to actually give it permission to publish statistics data there. So you would put this on, you would put this on like this, on public and on subscribe, I'm gonna only do it here. But you would do everywhere, right, there. Uh, you would need to go into the governance rule and also establish topic rules for the ROS show topics, request replies, ROS discovery info, and FastDDS. That is uh, uh, fast, fast DDS statistics that is in this file. So you would modify this topic rule and substitute that single topic rule for with the wildcard for specific ones for the different things, right? And then you would need to sign those two files. You would need to sign the permissions on the governance file using OpenSSL. Um, so they actually, you know, the modifications are uh, valid and are signed by the certification authority. And then you would need to go into the security and into the XML configuration file for the for the monitor and on the where it says here HSM URL. Uh, here, what you put is the URL, the same URL that is on the TP11. You put this thing there. And then you're basically uh, good to go. Uh, there is one missing export here on this snippet, which is the the one for the for the pin for the PKCS11 pin. This one. So be sure you export this as well on the monitor terminal. And then you just run the entire simulation again, right? You you run the you run the monitor with the uh, pointing to the uh, XML configuration for the security. You run the monitor and then you run. Uh, the simulation again, and you will see that you have statistics uh, also for the security part. I'm sorry we didn't have time to go through that. Um, but I want to jump into conclusion. So uh, I know this, been, this, is, this has been a lot of information. We wanted to show you uh, some of the crucial capabilities of Vulkan Exus. Uh, we've seen the fast DDS monitor and how to monitor uh, Vulkan Exus statistics or ROS2 statistics. Uh, real time and see graphs and be able to export CSV files, uh, compare performance, etc. identify all their next. You can use it for a lot of things, right? Uh, 
probably you can think of more than I can think of. Um, and, and we have also seen how Vulcanexus has extended the ROS2 security capabilities to, to move the private keys into a dedicated hardware. So, so there is an extra level of security there that uh, the, the private keys or the private keys are not are no longer stored in, in the machines. So, you know, if you get, let, let's say you have your, your thing, uh, you, you have your drone sto uh, stolen or something, people can access directly, right? Uh, to the private key. Um, with with this hardware secure module, it, it's more difficult than that because the hardware secure modules uh, do have um, um, hardware checks in place. So, you know, if someone tries to tamper or tries to extract or do nasty things with, with the sensitive information, uh, for one, it will delete all the sensitive information and you may also get notification depending on the hardware secure module you're using. And, you know, so this is what we wanted to show how to you know, uh, leverage Vulcan Exus uh, to to improve your ROS2 experience uh, with uh, with the many add-ons that we are putting together on top of ROS on top of ROS2 with Vulcan Exus. Um, okay, thank you, Eduardo. Fantastic. Thanks to you guys. Thank thanks, you, thanks a lot. Thank thanks you. a lot. I'm sorry if I went a bit over over the time. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it's no problem. Sorry. It's it's a very complex yeah. subject and a lot <laughs> yeah. of things. So yeah, it is. You have a lot of questions already. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go into those. Uh... So to the audience, you can go to the Q and A's and post your questions and vote for the ones that you find more interesting. So okay. Ricardo, um, yes, let me show. Let me go with the first one. Here is from Marco Pedretti that he says: mm -hmm. Is the monitor actually subscribing to the topic? So would it work also with an IPC enabled uh, communication without affecting the data transfer? So it's actually not subscribing to the user topic. Mm -hmm. uh, what what the FASID, what the FASIDS module does whenever you put these uh, environment variables, it does is it's creating a specific data writer for this topic. And then your your DDS participants or your ROS2 node is uh, collecting information and publishing information regarding latency every now and then. Right, and the monitor is subscribing to that topic, so uh -huh. not to your user topic. Your user topic can use APC, and then this one could use uh, UDP, for instance. You know that if you use uh, FastDDS, you have two transports by default. Your you, uh, FastDDS detects whether some some uh, node is on the same machine, and then it will use uh, shared memory, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the shared memory mechanisms uh, that we have. Uh, if it's on a different machine, it will use UDP by default. So you could have very large point clouds on the same machine con communicating uh, over shared memory and then uh, very few uh, statistics data going through UDP to your computer makes elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, exactly. Yeah. Okay, another question. Um, um, one from Marcus Vinicius. Um, it's a trivial quick summary. Uh, he's asking for if there's a quick summary for knowing how DDS works for beginners like like yeah. himself. We actually we actually have that kind of information in fast DDS documentation. I guess you can see my screen, right? So we have oh. the actually no, no, we this. cannot now we, we see Oh you, you cannot now. now. Oh sorry. Yes. <laughs> no sorry. but wait, do you have access to the chat? Uh, I do have access to the chat, yeah. To the chat of the conference. So I I, yeah. I I think that you were monitoring. So you can write it on the chat, this link to the documentation. So the oh yes, there it is. Yes. Okay, yeah, perfect. so that's a, a getting a started uh, tutorial. It's the uh, most basic. I'm going to open this into a different tab so I can see you better. Um, okay. Okay, let me ask you another uh, mm -hmm. high-rated question from George Kosmin that says, since we need that PIN environment variable to be exported for the whole security characteristics that are set to be enforced, wouldn't this raise then the question how do you securely store that pin? Wouldn't <laughs> that placing it just in the an environment variable make also a, a create a vulnerability? Sure, sure it will. But uh, at some point you are going to need a password uh, stored somewhere unless you want to type. Actually, if um, if you have a um, graphical environment tool, it is possible to you know, and and you don't have this pin, it will. It is possible to to type the the password every time, right? 
uh, but but that is not practical for for robotic deployments uh, in our opinion so so the way you are securing the private key is that you know you are in the lab wherever working with your robot with the uh, with the hardware secure uh, module uh, connected and then whenever you turn the thing off be sure to unplug the hardware secure module right and then even if people have the pin the pin they won't have access to the private key right okay. so you can make this separation of concerns for sure there is always going to be one possible hack right but this is kind of you, you can make it more difficult uh, in the in this sense mm -hmm. plus you need to export i i wouldn't recommend to put that pin into the bash rc right uh, <laughs> i would recommend something something a bit more uh sophisticated Elaborate. Uh -huh. okay okay uh, one, more, one more question yeah 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 we have time for another question okay so marco pedretti is it possible to configure a specific ethernet adapter or to use loopback when running in a local host configuration uh, sure, it is. With FastDDS, it is. Yeah, yeah. Actually, as I was saying, if you are on the local host, it would use one of the shared memory mechanisms. Depending on your data, we have faster ones or a bit slower ones, but still way faster than uh, networking communication, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those are shared memory transport and data sharing. Uh, if you actually, if you if you are on this subject, uh, I will post here. Uh, documentation for the transport layer so you can uh, read about all the possible uh, configurations you have in FastDDS, which are a lot of them. Um, but if you are uh, bound for whatever reason to UDP, it is possible to configure which uh, interfaces to use. Uh, it's called interface whitelisting. It's also on the transport uh, documentation. Um, so you select which interfaces you want FastDDS to, to, to use, and then it will not use the other ones, right? So you can actually put local host there. But FastDDS, if 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 it for whatever for whatever reason shared memory is not it's not an option, but the two processes are in the same machine, it will use local host by default, anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, thanks. Um, I think it, we yeah, are done. it's finished. Yes. yes. So thanks a lot. Eduardo. Thank you. Eduardo. Thanks a lot. Uh, can can I? Uh, there, there was a small one. Uh, whether there was, there is overhead for this monitoring? Uh, oh, sure. Yes, 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 sure, please sure. go ahead. Go sure. ahead. For okay. sure, there is this. Uh, uh, Which a question? Sorry, overhead. wait, wait. Can you uh, say uh, the the question? Maya, you... Maya Honeya, Mayank. Ah, yeah. Honeya. Is there a way people can access to profile the overhead of introducing security? Oh no, no. Uh, sure, you can actually do that with the FastDS monitor. I, I understand it uh, differently. You can actually do that uh, with the FastDS monitor, right? You can run mm -hmm. your setup without security, and then run your setup with security, and then use you know the monitor if you are publishing latency, for instance, or if you are only publishing statistical data about uh, latency, you can actually see the the impact of security, which, as you can expect, is not small because you are encrypting and decrypting on top of everything else, right? OK. OK, then very good. So the, the last question, then it, then it went. And thank you very much, Eduardo. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks Eduardo. to you, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome Thanks. presentation. Thank and, you. And now it's time to rate the presenter, the speaker. Sorry, the speaker. So now you are going to see that it appears the uh, a small pop up where you can rate the speaker. Mm -hmm. Yes, please so rate it. Zero to five stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we move on to the next spe uh, speech, let me remind you that you have to open the, the next Rostec, that it's in the docs tab. So please do so, so that uh, you have the Rostec run uh, ready to go when the speaker is, uh, when he starts. Yes. And uh, next thing, mm -hmm. let's go to the next thing. Okay, so now we are going to prepare the next the speaker. And for this, we are going to do another uh, quiz, a quiz. Quiz. Yes, another quiz where you have the chance to win this T-shirt. Sexy T-shirt. And t -shirt. also one mug like yeah, this. This one is limited edition Starbucks. Okay, that's a Starbucks. Not, then that's not the one that you're going to get. You're <laughs> going to get a Ross, uh, Ross yeah, Developers uh, Day. The one of, I am a Ross developer. That's good. So this is only for him. Yes. Uh, it's limited edition for yes. me. Yes. <laughs> and uh, for that, so what we are going to do is to show a video of one of our sponsors. In this case, it's going to be uh, promoted by the, the prize is, is given by Robotnik. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are going to see a video, and uh, that contains some information. At the end of the video, you will see a question, and the first person that answers that question correctly on the chat then we'll win the, 
yeah. with a shirt on the night. So be quick and see you in five minutes.
Hello, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> and now we can see how people are starting to do tricks <laughs> in order to win. They are and engineers. They, they think in advance. Yes, but we, uh, I'm sorry. We don't like the tricks. We want the hard stuff, you know? <laughs> Doing the, the real thing, the real thing. Okay, so why I'm telling you that, because the obvious answer to the question, the correct one, was RB1. And then there was one, uh, one in one of the ROS developers here attending, that is uh, Danut MH, that he said the answer five minutes before the, the, the video was already finished. So at the beginning, so that's not possible because you cannot see the, the question. It was the, the answer, yeah, but that's not the, the point. The point is to, to answer the uh -huh. question, okay? So I'm sorry, but you are not the winner. So the winner is the next one, who is, um, let me check because this is moving, ah, yeah. Alejandro Serna. Okay, so Alejandro, you are the winner. Our team is going to contact you after the conference and send you for your details and send you the T-shirt and the map. Great. Yeah, well, well, well learned. Very well. <laughs>